Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining. Um, we'll start in a, a few seconds. Uh, let me introduce you to my, my colleague, uh, Olivier Delamotte, who is a head of product. And me, I'm Mehdi Benalal, uh, head of marketing here at Califio. Uh, I let the floor to my uh, colleague to start. So welcome to this uh, webinar about our brand new GDPR toolbox, which we've been developing for the last couple of months here. Uh, and we are just one month away from the big day. So it was important for us to show a bit to uh, all of you uh, guys uh, what we've been building. So concretely, well, We've been through that part already. So I'm head of product at Colifio, Medi is head of marketing. And let's get to the next point already. So the agenda. Basically, we'll make a quick introduction, uh, very quick about Colifio, what we uh, do. Uh, the GDPR toolbox, uh, obtaining consent, best practices presented by Medi. And then we'll have some Q and A's just after so if you have questions please shoot them via the the, the q a section of this webinar so first of all what's qualifio uh, we are the leading interactive marketing and data collection software so really on those two uh, pillars interactive marketing and data collection well how concretely via a set of various interactive uh, campaigns, interactive formats, such as quizzes, forms, uh, personality tests, memories, etc., etc., that you will be able to launch on your channels. And of course, all those formats will collect data. So we have different type of data. We will have uh, behavioral data, but of course, what will really interest us today, PII uh, data. So concretely, how does it work? Well, you will, as media, as brand, as agency, create the interaction that you need to create. So it's a quiz, it's a poll, it's an instant twin that you will publish on your own channel. So at the same time, uh, on, on the website via an iframe or on a mini site or on a Facebook page, for instance, or in your mobile app. And then you will have all the collecting of uh, the data. So you will have a live reporting Inside Qualifio, there is also a CRM in Qualifio, but most importantly, we will be able to connect Qualifio to your data tools, such as your CRM, your single sign-on, your DMP, and send that data all, uh, all over your IT, your data infrastructure. So that's it basically for the, the small summary of what Qualifio is. We've been working for a couple of years now with the large large brands all across Europe. Uh, well, here is a couple of them uh, with whom we've been working for the last couple of years. So concretely, what we've been, well, what we see in the, in the data collection activities is that they're really a multiplication of the stakeholders within a company who are willing, who need to collect data. So we will have, for instance, the, the marketing uh, department, which is uh, the biggest uh, data collecting uh, service service uh, we'll have the loyalty department maybe uh, we can have the advertising department etc etc so several departments who will always use also most most of the time different uh, external partners so different earth intermediaries and providers as said on the slide and so we see that there there is really a decentralization of the data and marketing activities uh, among brands, which leads, of course, to some risks. So this is exactly what, why we are talking here about GDPR. Uh, it's that all these data that may flow into the, the partners of the marketing or another partner for the, the loyalty department, well, there's very few uh, centralized vision or control for the DPO because we can have data basically anywhere. So we have the risk, of course, of data leak, which uh, becomes very big here for the, the GDPR. Data processing without the consent of the data subject will 
come back to the, the consent part in, in the second part of the, of the presentation. And of course, the collection of sensitive data that could occur because not all of your, uh, all of the, the, the people in your company are aware of what is, what can be collected or what, can, what cannot be collected. With the GDPR coming up, uh, there are a lot of, uh, well, big increase in fines and penalties in terms of data leaks, uh, well, any, anything that uh, touches data. So we see that we have fines up to 20 million or 4% of the global turnover of a company, uh, which can be quite big as you can imagine. Uh, you need to, to have information, well, the information, to do, you need to inform the data subject if you have a data leak, sorry. And of course, there is a big impact on your brand image if you have trouble with uh, a data leak. We've seen that in a couple of uh, last couple of, uh, of weeks, I would say, with uh, Facebook and Cambridge Analytica, for instance. So basically, what we've been building for the last couple of, uh, of weeks and months here at Qualifio is a, a tool, a set of tools, actually, that will be able, what, that will make you uh, do your data collection activities and marketing activities really while being GDPR compliant with the Qualifier tool. So, well, I propose that we dig directly into the tool uh, so that it's really more concrete for you guys. It's, where, it's in this one. Okay, perfect. So we're here into uh, Qualifia, as you can all recognize this screen if you're already users. Otherwise, well, we'll have here just a small participation. There is a, a campaign that's been here, let's say, launched for your marketing activities. Very easy campaign. Okay, I've, I've got a couple of questions and I will put my information because well for instance it's a uh, it's for a couponing it's for a big prize because it's a contest so i will just leave my data here and that's it i've just left my data to the uh, data processor which is qualifio and now of course as data controller which is you basically you also have some responsibilities if this data subjects maybe wants to erase you to erase the, the, the data you have about them wants to have this data etc so let's go directly into the settings of the account and we see here a brand new uh, logo which is a logo for we have created for a gdpr toolbox so this is accessible for all users having access to the settings. So this is basically uh, the admins and the marketeers of your uh, account. The first thing that you will need to set up when logging into the GDPR toolbox is to name a DPO. Here, we'll see that, okay, demo effect, obviously. It, it, the first DPO needs to be appointed by the, your account manager. Why is that? Well, we don't want any uh, any admin of the of your account to name himself as DPO and do whatever he wants with the data. So first thing to do is well contact your uh, Qualifio contact and tell him, okay, this user he needs to be the DPO of our account and he will have the biggest rights into the GDPR toolbox. So here there is a, a user that is named uh, demo GDPR, uh, which is basically me here. And I've well put some settings that each data export from the GDPR toolbox must be, must be validated from the DPO. We'll come back to this. So the first thing uh, that we, I want to show you is this module, which is the data subject erasure. In this module, we have three separate options. The first one, is a bulk erasure that you might want to do at the very beginning of the use of the GDPR toolbox. Why is that? Well, you've been collecting data for a couple of months, years, for, uh, possibly for uh, longest Qualifia users. And well, in your new uh, data retention policy, you cannot hold that data 
uh, as long as you as you wish so you are going to set a time frame from which you want to erase all PII, PII sorry so it's really for from the I don't know the the from 2017 until beginning of last year let's say and then you will ask for a deletion and of course the DPO will uh, be able to approve that this is really going to be used once maybe twice but it's really for beginning of the use then you will be able to set in accordance with the article 13 of the uh, G of the GDPR and about the data retention policy you will be able to set your own data retention policy meaning okay I want to erase all data of the users that are older than maybe a year so every data that comes in to Qualifio will be erased one year after the participation this way you can be compliant with what you set out in your data retention policy another right that is been uh, very much talked about in about the, the GDPR is about the article uh, 17 with the right to be forgotten so let's say a data subject, let's say Medi here, uh, wants the data, the data controller so that you are to erase all the data that you have about it. Well, that's very easy. You can, we'll be able to look him up within, in one place uh, for all the places in Qualifio where there could be data. So all the campaign statistics or the CRM or the opt-ins all at once, maybe based only on the email. So let's say I want to find data matching the email medi at qualifia.com and well we find one profile here that match these uh, well th this email I'm going to check it and ask for a deletion because this data you this the data subject wanted his data to be deleted here okay why am I going to ask for this deletion well, the request has now be sent to the DPO and it must be validated, meaning that not only the DPO can ask for it, but all the admins of the account can ask for a deletion, but it will need to be approved by the DPO. I will go to an approval right after. First of all, I, will, I would like to talk to you about the, the data subject export module, which is really related to uh, the portability uh, the, the article 20 sorry about the portability and the and the access to data so once again let's say that uh, Medi wanted to, to know which data you have about uh, his person well before you erase it of course here I haven't validated the, the erasure so I can still extract the data that I have about Medi here and once again, it's really the same principle. I can decide to export this data and have it accessible afterwards. Here, once again, the request has been sent to the DPO and you will need to validate it so you don't have data flowing anywhere that uh, could be possible. So here, I've made two re requests that I will find in the GDPR request here. That's exactly the two last requests that I see. There is a data export. I can see in the little info bu bubble here what it is about. So, okay, it's a data export about mediatqualifia.com. Well, I can either validate it or refuse it. If I validate, well, the export will be available in a few minutes here and the user that has requested the, the data export will receive an email to tell him, okay, your export is ready, come and get it so that you can send it to the, uh, to the user in person. Same principle for the deletion. Here, I want to delete maybe uh, Medi. Well, it's, I'm a DPO, so I can decide whether it's justified request or not. Here, let's say it's not a justified request, so I'm going to justify uh, it cannot be deleted because for one reason or another that will be transmitted to the user that has been requesting the deletion. So 
yes, I refuse, and so on and so forth. So here is just for one example. We can see here below, there's been a manual delete that has been requested before. It was yesterday. And if I check the info bubble, of course, we'll say it's anonymous at qualifier.com because as we have deleted the profile, we won't be able to find them back. That's fairly normal. So now, other, an, another uh, important info, uh, module is the data protection text. So now you have the obligation to inform your users on why you're collecting the data, how long you will hold that data. So you will be able to set some default uh, data protection text that will be always visible in your campaigns. There are two places where you can put this, this data, either underneath the form, so that will, this is data that will be placed every time underneath the form without that the users, the qualifier users can edit it. So it's really fixed, done by the DPO, and it cannot be edited by the editor, the journalist, the marketeers afterwards, or in the menu, that will be a little button in the menu where you will find your privacy text. Let's just look into it. We can, you can define it either for the whole, the whole account or website per website. If you're familiar with the qualifier structure, that will uh, mean something to you, actually. Otherwise, there is the, the Q&A. Feel free to ask a question. Uh, another module here that is very useful is the logs about the GDPR. So what will you find here? Basically, any action made by a, by a user related to data. So either he has consulted some data or exported some data. So here we see that this user, he has consulted a CRM profile. He has uh, consulted a CRM profile via the export. He has consulted some uh, campaign statistics. He has exported some campaign statistics. Uh, so really all the actions related to data will be logged here. You will be able to find them back and export it if you need. So why is this very important? Well, if you have a risk uh, maybe of, of data leak, well, you can go and see which user and ex has extracted which data at which moment. And you can sort by user, for instance. You have suspicion on one specific user or on one specific date, you will be able to sort it out uh, very easily. So now we also have the overview of all identification fields. So as you may know, in Polytheum, we have really a difference with, with uh, the identification fields, which are really the field from the form, uh, which will be basically all the PII, first name, last name, email, all the data that is really related to one person compared to the question field, which will be related to one part patient. So uh, basically, all the questions that you could ask that are not PII. In here, you can have a clear view very easily of all the PII that is requested to your participants per language here. And you see, okay, there is one name, uh, one field that is first name, last name. Why is this useful? It's basically to make sure that your user are not collecting sensitive data. If, let's say, you see here that there is a field that is collecting uh, the political preferences, the sexual preferences, the religion of the data subject, well, this is absolutely not something that you would like, like to have. So you can modify the field right from here or archive it. Once again, you can export it very easily. Finally, in uh, the GDPR toolbox, you will be able to find all the measures the data protection measure that Qualifio uh, puts in place uh, very easily and always updated, of course, so that you don't need to ask for it every time that you need them. So it's very easy for internal communication. So basically that's it for our first version of the GDPR toolbox. What's very important is that we're not uh, going to stay there. There are a couple of more improvements that we will make before the 25th of next month. First of all, we will be able to, to let you decide uh, whether you want to 
collect the IP addresses in an anonymous campaign or not. You will be able to uh, decide if maybe none, no users except the admins of your account can make some exports. Uh, you will have here an overview of all question fields, of course, and maybe the possibility to limit the right to the access to the G DPR toolbox only to the uh, admins and not the marketeers. There's still just two points I would like to, to add, uh, Mehdi. The first one, uh, it's very, well, technical, but all these features have been built on an API. What does this mean? Maybe you have other tools that are collecting and hosting uh, data in your IT infrastructure, and you want to just activate the export or the erasure or of a data subject via one central database, well, that is possible. We have an API that allows you to do so, so that will be very, uh, very much possible here uh, to do it. You can just request the, the documentation that will be uh, given very uh, freely to everyone that requests it. The second point is in the statistics of the campaign. I've done yesterday an erasure of a, a data subject. And well, it was a, a, a problem that was brought by our users that don't want all their, well, their, their participation data to be gone just because they've uh, deleted some, some data. So what you will find once you've done a deletion is that we will keep the question part, but we erase the form part. So we see here, gender, first name, last name, email, birth date, opt-in, it's all deleted because I've asked the deletion of this user. Just a, a little heads up, the IP here is still there, but it will be removed very shortly uh, alongside the, the, the second version of the GDPR toolbox once you delete the PII of the user. Um, okay, so thanks Olivier for this demo. Uh, now that we're done with the GDPR toolbox, I would like to give you some uh, examples of good practice to collect consent of the data subject in compliance with GDPR. Um, so as you may know, uh, consent is a key element of, uh, of uh, the GDPR, of the new law, and so, um, so I would like to, to, to show you uh, the practical implications for your opt-in forms. Um, so actually the law clearly states what, uh, what consent means under the GDPR. Uh, so what is the consent un under the GDPR? It's, uh, it needs to be freely given, it needs to be specific, informed, unambiguous, and it also requires a clear affirmative action. Uh, uh, furthermore, you need to be able to prove any time that you collected the consent, and that's uh, one of the goal of the GDPR toolbox. And it, uh, it must be as easy to withdraw as it is to, uh, to give. So uh, the first uh, condition is that the, the information must be intelligible to everyone. So uh, you're done with the technical languages that only the lawyer understands. You need to provide the data subject with a very understandable, uh, understandable um, information on a series of aspects. What is the purpose of the processing? Where is the data stored? For how long? How can uh, he exert his right, etc. Uh, so here you have an example of uh, L'Oréal. Uh, who choose like a question and answer format to answer these questions in a very like common language. And they also list, um, they also list the data that they may collect uh, with your consent, of course. Um, another example of uh, transparency is uh, Nestlé. So you see that beside the fact that they also provide um, by text uh, the information on these different uh, topics, they, uh, they do a video. They use the video in order to, to make the information more uh, uh, pedagogical. Uh, so they use a short video uh, to answer each of these questions. Um, the, the GDPR also clearly uh, states that, um, I mean, it, it clearly encouraged the, um, the data uh, controller to provide uh, concise information, uh, concise information in, in order to, uh, to uh, improve the lisibility of the information. And that's precisely what LinkedIn does. So you see that in the privacy policy for each paragraph, uh, they have a summary of the main ID. 
Hein? So, uh, so this is something that is clearly encouraged because it makes the information more clear. Um, some of this information, so um, the information that you need uh, to, to give to the data subject in order to consider that he consents, this information, some of them should be directly into your um, uh, opt-in form. Uh, and so the level of tolerance uh, and the precise uh, uh, requirements depends from one country to another for this part. It depends on the national regulations. Uh, but here you, you have, for example, an example of Fran France Television. And you see that uh, below the form, you have the main information that is uh, the name of the data controller, uh, that is the, the, um, the purpose of the processing, uh, the contact, even the contact information of uh, the service uh, through which you can exert your rights. Uh, again, uh, you, can, you can be creative about the format that you choose. Here is uh, an example of a um, um, digital agency in the UK. And you see that for each field, they, uh, they provide the information on why, how, how they will use that data and why. So that's it for the informed part. So the goal here is to be as transparent as possible and to give all the important information. And the important information, you don't decide what the uh, important information are. It's clearly stated in, uh, in the, the GDPR text. And I can, I can give you uh, the detail uh, if you want. Um, so, second dim dim dimension is that it needs to be specific, okay? Uh, so, specific, it means that one consent is specific to one uh, purpose of uh, processing. Uh, so, you cannot follow uh, an all or nothing approach. Huh? And first, that means that you cannot mix, uh, for example, your uh, mailing uh, consent with the application of the terms and conditions. These should be uh, completely dissociated. Huh? And so here you see an example of uh, uh, Sainsbury's. Uh, you have here the terms and conditions that are compulsory. And here you have uh, the newsletter subscription that is uh, optional. Another example here, eDreams. Uh, again, terms and condition in Spanish here. And, um, and also the, the newsletters, two separate blocks. Uh, here you have a French, um, French uh, digital agency. You see that uh, the, the, this question of specific consent is also raised by, uh, for the partnerships. Huh? So usually you can consent to receive like uh, the brand's communication and also the brand's partner's communication, if you wish. And so this, this partner needs to be named. Huh? So, and also it needs to be dissociated. So here you see that je souhaite être informé de nouveaux contenus means I want to receive the new, uh, the new contents of Digital Web, which is the agency, or I want to receive the news from As Avocat, the partners, which is clearly named. Again, two separate blocks for Europe Car, one for them, one for their partners. And if you want a list of the partners, you just need to click here and you have the exhaustive list of all the partners. Again, Dior, it can also be about the topic, uh, the topic that you want to receive, perfume and body of, of, or uh, fashion and accessories. Huh? So the idea here is to give um, your uh, data subject uh, a lot of granularity in their uh, consent. Huh? The more granularity you give, the better it is uh, on a GDPR perspective. It can also be the support. Huh? Do you want to receive it by mail, by uh, text message? Um, so the more, the more choice you give, the more uh, validity you give to, to uh, the consent. Another important aspect, it needs to be affirmative. Huh? So no, no pre-checked uh, box. Uh, here you have uh, another example with, you see, beside the fact that, again, the terms and conditions are separated from uh, the mailing list subscription, you see that per default, it's no. Huh? And it's clearly stated by the red color. Uh, so no, no pre-checked box. You need, uh, the data subject need to, me, to make a positive action in order to consent. Uh, freely given, freely given, it means that you cannot set uh, this kind of consent as a condition to access your service. Um, so it needs to be, uh, there needs to be no prejudice if the person decides not to consent, otherwise it's not considered as freely given. So here Walmart, you see that they clearly state that uh, it's optional. They give the basic information on, on what they will send you. And they also uh, say that you can unsubscribe at any time. So this is another important aspect in the freely given 
uh, part, it, uh, the, the, the possibility to uh, withdraw any, any time. Huh? So uh, it, it, it should be as easy to withdraw as it is to, to give. And so it means uh, that uh, you, you don't have to hide uh, the, the possibility to, to withdraw uh, in, in the, the below uh, uh, hidden page. It needs to be clear. And here you have an example of Spotify uh, who um, do it smart actually, because it's easy to unsubscribe. But when you unsubscribe, they give you also the possibility to keep a part of the information. And they give you a lot of granularity in the information that you can choose to receive, okay? So this is very granular, uh, even when you decide to unsubscribe. Another example for The Guardian, you just need to click on a button, uh, enter your password, and then you receive an email with uh, the clear information on, on the impact that it will have uh, and the confirmation that everything was deleted. And you cannot uh, register again with the same address. So, other examples um, that I found also is, again, very smart way. If you unsubscribe, they propose you first to, uh, to diminish the, the frequency of the communication. If you want to receive a, a weekly recap instead of daily recap, or if uh, you just want to unsubscribe to everything. So the more creative you are in the format, again, the more uh, good results you will, you will have and the, the better relation you will uh, build with your, uh, with your audience. Huh? So again, the keyword is granularity. Here also, they use a slider uh, to decide the frequency. Uh, and so it's quite, uh, quite uh, creative in terms of user experience. And uh, finally, uh, the right to access. Uh, so uh, another website, uh, recruitment website, where only with one, one, uh, one button you can download all the data uh, that uh, is related to you. So these, um, so, so these are like some examples that can give you some inspiration. None of these examples is perfect on a GDPR perspective. Huh? You can always find something that is not 100% uh, uh, compliant. So the goal here is to give you some ideas on, on okay, how does that uh, translate into your forms? and to try to, to be a compliant when GDPR uh, enter into force, but we, we, we don't know exactly um, what is a 100% compliant uh, form uh, looks like. Huh? Uh, so also we'll see that when the, when the law will be uh, entered into force. Uh, 